What functions are equal to their own nth derivative? In this video, I'm going to find out the solution to this problem and describe all the solutions. And in doing so, I'm going to describe a family of functions that I'm going to call the spiral trigonometric functions that are going to generalize the usual exponential function and the usual sine and cosine of x and put them in context as an entire family of functions that satisfy this property. I think this is really cool, so stay with me. In order to find the functions whose nth derivative is equal to itself, we need to solve this differential equation. And the theory of differential equations tells me that the family of solutions is going to be n-dimensional. So there's going to be a basis of solutions given by some functions f1 through fn. So let's figure out what functions are those. The theory of differential equations also tells me that those basic functions f sub k are e to the alpha x, where alpha is some complex number. In this case, because of the differential equation we want to solve, the alpha has to satisfy that alpha to the n equals 1. So alpha is what we call a root of unity in the complex numbers, and we know how to write those. Then alpha k is e to the 2 pi k divided by n times i, where k ranges from 0 to n minus 1. So there you go. We have solved our differential equation. The full solution is a function of this form, where those cn are any complex constants. But the problem is that, well, for one thing, this is kind of ugly, and the second is that these are complex-valued functions. So can I find functions that satisfy the differential equation that are real-valued functions? And the answer is yes, because I can use the following trick. If I have a complex-valued function f, I can break it as the real part plus i times the imaginary part, and if the nth derivative of f is equal to f, then the real part also has that property, and the imaginary part also has that property that the nth derivative is itself, but the real part and the imaginary part are real-valued functions. And that gives me an entire family of functions that, for one thing, they are real-valued, for a second thing, they generate the space of solutions of the differential equation, and, by the way, I only have to go up to the greatest integer less or equal to n over 2, because after that, I get repetitions up to sign of the same functions. But those are still unsightly. Can I simplify? And the answer is yes, of course, we can simplify, thanks to, you guessed it, Euler. Thanks to Euler's formula, I'm going to be able to use Euler's formula to simplify what's the real and imaginary part of this complex exponential. So here is the solution after I've used Euler's formula once, but now you see I have another real part of a complex exponential, in this case the real part of an nth root of unity, so uh, let's use Euler's formula again. And then what I get is this family of functions that are given by exponentials and sines and cosines, and, uh, and these are the functions that I'm going to call the spiral trigonometric functions. Let me show you why. For a fixed value of n, n k in that range, we are going to define the n k spiral trigonometric functions, s cosine and s sine, and what I'm going to be interested in is what graph do they parameterize when I write s cosine and s sine and let x be a parameter. So let me give you some examples of what happens for small values of n. With n equals 1, I get e to the x comma 0, so that parameterizes the positive x-axis, which I'm going to call a degenerate spiral. When n equals 2, I get e to the x comma 0 and e to the minus x comma 0, and these are both the positive x-axis, so they are still just degenerate spirals. For n equals 3, I still get one degenerate solution, which is the x-axis, and then an actual spiral. These two functions parameterize a spiral, and I'll show you in a moment what the graph looks like. For n equals 4, I get the two degenerate solutions, and also another degenerate spiral, which is just the circle of radius 1, and that gives me cosine x and sine of x as part of this family. For n equals 5, I get two different spirals that are actual spirals besides the trivial solution. By the way, the sine and cosine of 2 pi over 5 have these algebraic values. And this is what happens when you plot the graph of s cosine s sine, in this case, in the case n equals 5 and k equals 1 and 2, you get these two spirals. And here is the case of n equals 7. For n equals 7 and k 1, 2, and 3, you get three different spirals here in blue, red, and green. 
And that's the reason why I'm calling these functions the spiral trigonometric functions, because they parameterize this very specific logarithmic spiral. And notice that in the case of n equals 4, the cotangent is exactly 0, and that gives me that the radius is constant equal to 1, so in that case the spiral is a circle of radius 1, and in that very special case, what we get for a spiral trigonometric functions are the usual cosine x and sine of x. So that puts cosine x and sine of x as one member of this infinite family of spiral trigonometric functions.